Hello, I'm Tamara Calder Richardson, and welcome to Seeking Heaven, the Near-Death Experience and Other Phenomena. Tonight, we have a very special Christmas ev event for you and a very special guest. And tonight, we have Betty Eady. Betty, you might have heard of her for some time. She is a trailblazer in terms of her near-death experience story. Uh, her book, Embraced by the Light, has been seen by millions of people. Uh, it was on the bestseller list two years. It sold over 13 million copies. And since then, she has written other books, such as The Awakening Heart and The Ripple Effect, Our Harvest. She, like myself, had an experience with her near-death experience where she was in the presence of Christ, which is why I have been personally really thrilled to meet her. Uh, she was also someone I uh, read her book years ago before I came out with my dear death experience, as well as uh, around that same time frame, like Danny and Brinkley, Saved by the Light, which also really left a big impact on me. But tonight, um, you're going to be so impressed with, uh, with Betty. She's such a kind, loving person, and I am so excited to have her here and explain what it was like to be in Christ's presence. And the topic tonight will be how embracing the light brought me into the arms of Christ's love. So I want to welcome Betty Eady, and I also want to wish all of you a happy holiday and a Merry Christmas. Welcome, near-death experiencer, Betty Eady. Gosh, you, you're like a forerunner in this. You're like a, you're a trailblazer. You, um, did what so many people didn't want to do that were frightened to really speak about it. Well, it was, um, I, and maybe I was just too ignorant to uh, consider being the first book out there of an actual personal near-death experience. Raymond Moody was actually the first, as you, as you know, but it was Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who I think kind of opened that door with her book. And, um, and then Raymond, and then uh, Embraced by Light, uh, uh, coming yes. out with a personal experience. I, I knew what I had to do. You know, when you're compelled mm -hmm. by the Spirit, you, you go forward. And um, I, I just didn't consider um, any other option. I had to do this. And my husband and I spoke a long, quite, a, quite a bit about it because he said, you're really going to be putting yourself out there. That's true be criticized and um, I thought well that was nothing new to me criticism is something I kind of grew up with so it didn't I, it just didn't phase me so when the book went out and I knew that it was going to be a, a phenomenal success I just didn't understand what that meant uh, because you're trying to sell you. don't you think it was bigger than you <laughs> it, was, it was a movement. It was a movement you created. You had no idea. No idea. No idea. And uh, didn't know for actually several years later, uh, did I really slow down enough to take a look at it and realize what happened. Um, when you're in the thick of it, when you're busy and you're focused and and um, and you're going in the direction you feel is right. You don't. There's no turning around. There's no looking back. There's no. no. Just continue in the momentum and and carry on. And that's what I did. So now, when I was trying, I was trying to get the date on that. The date the book was re first initially released. Uh, what year was that? This is a while back. Because it, I mean, because you've written several books since. Uh, 1992. 1992. Okay. Right. Okay. That wow. I thought it might have even been back in the 80s, but uh, but no, 92. Okay. I was trying to remember the initial date. So I mean that affected. It's 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 funny because you've written so many books, but that book still um, is still a somewhat of a favorite to a lot of people. Why do you think that is? Well, the the book, uh, it, you know it is about my near-death experience. It mm -hmm. chronicles what happened to me. Uh, I had no plans of writing other books. 
that was the, the sole purpose for writing, sharing that book was why I was returned from heaven and sent back to earth, given the, actually given the opportunity to come back <laughs> because, you know, I didn't want to come back. And, but when I found out that I would have to do this in order to awaken people to what they already know, the spirit already. Yeah, is. Absolutely. You're yeah. aware of all these things, but uh, we had lost it through the tradition uh, that uh, each one of us claim as being factual, actual, uh, when indeed it, uh, traditions are pretty much man-made and that, and mm -hmm. they create a that evolves in new traditions are made and et cetera, et cetera. And, um, but I was told that we needed to come back to what God is yeah. and what he is not and, um, and move back in that direction and to uh, learn too that within each of us is that part of God. It's the part of our, our DNA actually, just as our parents are our DNA mm -hmm. and, uh, we are, you know, get that from our ancestors. Well, God is, is our, his DNA is within each one of us and we have yeah. forgotten yeah. or we never knew it or accepted it again, tradition. And what we've learned since then has, um, dimmed our, our perfect view, our perfect, uh, knowledge, our perfect, uh, intuitions, our insight, or, you know, the, um, because we, we have it, we just need to awaken to it again. Nothing new, right. by life, as you know, from your experiences and the many other experiences people have had is not new. People who read my book said, as I read, I remember Wow, I that's a huge compliment. Yes, it is. Uh, yes. Wow. So well, that's what it's about. It's not just, it's a way to others to theirs. Well, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, it, when you look at people, and sometimes, you know, you could just be out and about, and sometimes I'll consciously be aware of it, and I'll be at the grocery store or whatever, and I'll say, today, I'm going to see God in people and I'll look and I'll see a little twinkle in your, their eye and I'll say hello to them. I say, hello, Roger, or whatever, <laughs> you know, how's your day? And then I'm sending the signal as I see the God in you and they smile very brightly. And, uh, you know, it makes me very sad, um, especially, you know, doing readings, being an evidential medium and so forth. Um, not like a well, I probably did pick it, but, um, but that's just something that's a part of me. It's always has been. And I hear people that um, it, it comes through all the time that they just, they're so lost and confused. And instead of just allowing, um, you know, them to be, to love themselves and that, to know that I tell people there's no mistakes. Uh, God doesn't make mistakes. If you're here, you're here for a reason. Because if you if he needed you on the other side, you would be gone in a second. You wouldn't even need to have a, a disease or an accident. You could just be gone. But um, I was like you. I, I argued to stay over there. I argued. Well, I mean, I've had a few, but my big one when I was uh, five and I had pneumonia and I was at least I was dead on arrival 15 minutes. But I don't know how much longer because when I arrived there, they clocked me in at 15, but they couldn't get me. I was code blues. They couldn't get me back. And I saw everything going on, saw different dimensions. But then I ended up in that place that looks like paradise with Jesus. And, um, well, I got to just say, <laughs> woof, it's, a, it's not a human love. It is so supernatural. It is just like, there is just so much love. Um, it is, um, I miss it. We don't have that kind of you know, all the people you love in the whole world here, love them dearly. They love you. It doesn't compare. It's all I can say. It's a supernatural is love because it's, it's a completeness. I really didn't want to leave him. 
uh, and, uh, and it was just, uh, you know, when you, you know, you try to tell people it's, you're complete on the other side, they don't understand that. And I think it's cause it's just not a, it's just not a human thing. <laughs> We're not complete here. We're broken. So, um, you know, reading yours years ago and then Danny and Brinkley saved by the light. Cause I went, Oh my God, I saw those white, those, uh, beings of light too, uh, was really, you know, um, groundbreaking because people didn't really talk about it like they do now now it's kind of it's becoming popular and i think it's because people are searching right now you know you've got confusion you've got the pandemic you've got um upheaval you know going on and you know in our society uh, people are feeling a little lost or confused and i think that the only good thing is that they're searching inside and they're asking questions and hopefully they're connecting with their creator. But I think that's what's happening now. What do you take that's going on these days? Well, I would like to think that Embraced by the Light actually opened the door oh, to yes. the unseen and uh, to uh, allow people to talk about what has gone on for eons. Embraced by Light does, is not the first near-death experience ever by, by a, a person here on Earth. If you look back, in fact, one of my favorite books is actually called My Son Liveth. Someone was kind enough to send that to me. And um, okay. I think it dates back to the 1800s. Okay, I'll look that up. My Son Lilith? Liveth. 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 And... Okay. Um, it, 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 they sent it to me and I read it and I thought, oh my gosh, this is just so absolutely awesome because much of what was written in that book, I experienced as well. And, um, uh, and, and or I understood it. Uh, Embraced by Light is 148 pages. It does not include my entire near-death experience. Um, the reason the book was short is because the publishing company had to keep the number of pages down you know the, the oh. book is, you know what i mean marketing it's okay it's all about mar publishing and marketing mm. and uh, if it's too long of a book um uh it, it, it the price just got it goes up. up do you think that's changed with publishing because i've seen now the average size of books or i mean it can be 135 it can be 175 but it's also common to see 264. Do you think that rules changed now that you're writing new books? And well, uh, you know, a lot of books back then, it depends upon it, uh, the publishing company and how much money they have. It's all about money. And uh, my book going out um, was by a, 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 actually a company that was created to publish my book. And so the people involved in the financial end had so much money. Uh, one person actually um, borrowed money from his home so that we wow. could get the book published. Wow. And uh, started off with like uh, 10,000 copies of Embrace, uh, bumped it up to 20,000 copies of Embrace. They were sold out in the first week that the book was published. It went back into publishing again. and But they had the money now that they could roll it over and keep um, the supply of books up. And then, of course, the marketing was brand new. I mean, nobody really wanted a book about a near-death experience. They didn't know what a near-death experience was. They probably was. didn't know what that was. I mean, did, was that even that term coined back then? I'm trying to think with, uh, I guess, Raymond Moody. Did, I mean, was it coined then? I guess. And, uh, I always, yeah, death experience because I didn't near die. I died. And, um, but people don't like to hear that you're dead and back again. And so I really? borrowed Why? his. I think it's wonderful. Well, you know, I know you and I, because we've experienced it. <laughs> you Try being a, never having that experience. It's fearful. It causes okay. a lot. Okay. Yeah. So in the beginning, I guess there was fear because the topic wasn't really talked about. It was still new. So there might've been fear with that word death. Right. Well, my, you know, a lot of the religious groups, uh, they said, you know, in the Bible, it says you have but once to die. So I couldn't have died. 
that was their, uh, their comment. And then other people said, well, if you, not understanding death, if you died, you'd, you would have rotted or you'd be brain dead. I finally, <laughs> just for my own self-survival, just, just to put a joke on it, I'd say, well, you'd be brain dead. And I says, maybe I am brain dead. You know, I don't know. Right. Right. With, food, wow. life. we've come a so long my, way yeah so my old brain it probably did die you know i mean i don't i don't know but uh yeah there was a lot of uh but now there's no fear of it and uh people are there i just uh here recently um listened to a young lady who was dying in the hospital of covid and um she wasn't uh, a religious type person. And she said, as she was dying, she met Jesus. And uh, he healed her body and sent her back. And she was recording from her iPhone right there in a hospital. Tears, brand new experience. She was mm -hmm. just, oh my gosh. I mean, I cried right on with her as I watched it. Uh, she just says, uh, you know, I'm not making this up. This really happened to me and uh, that he was healing her body. And, oh, yeah. uh, and I, yeah, I know. And I, and I'm sure like you, once you have met Jesus mm. Christ, mm -mm. it's good stuff. It's good stuff. <laughs> and not only that, whenever you hear that someone else has met him, Ugh. it's like, a homecoming they're talking about someone you know someone you love and uh it and it's it's awesome i have met many near-death experiencers i won't name names but I these understand. people also met christ but were fearful of saying so it's still going it's still going on yeah and if you are coming out on my show and you are the third one I, no, me, I'm fourth. I'm always not popular because I do. I'm like, look, I never tell anyone. It's not a belief thing. It's an experience thing. Experience thing. And, mm -hmm. uh, and at first I was, after I had the experience to start sharing it, um, I started withholding, not Christ. I, I just told people, you know what? I joined the INC uh, uh, group uh, here in Seattle area. Uh, and um, I remember for the first time coming out of the closet with Jesus. It's true. And it's I, a big deal. It is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I don't want to die and go back and having denied the fact <gasps> that. Yes. Okay. I knew you were my sister, not only because we both have Native American and we kind of favor, but you were totally my sister. That I feel the same way. I don't push it on people, but I cannot deny what I saw and what I experienced and what I know to be so. And I still talk to him. He still talks to me I'm like all the time. He's like talks all the time. So I can't deny that because it's, it's denying him when I see him. I, I couldn't face him and say, I blew you off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're not that popular, so I can't talk. <laughs> it's, you know, no, I think that Christ would not like that. And I thought, I, 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 I'm just going to go and be who I am uh, and tell my experience as I experienced it and just let the chips fall wherever they may. And, and you know, and, and, but then you see, I was told that that would happen. Um, that you mean, you mean the other side told you this was going to happen? Oh, yeah, <laughs> your guides, your okay. I know, Jesus. I know Jesus talks to me too. That's why I couldn't wait to, to yeah. talk to you because I know he's still talking to you because he talks to me all the time. Um, oh. yeah, he tells me stuff too. Yeah, he says people say cruel things, I should be prepared for it and know they don't know better. You know what? Here's the thing, um, because I told him, I, I asked him. I says, "How on earth am I going to go back?" Because this is when he's convincing me to go back. How am I going to go back and share what I just experienced here? How am I going to do that? He said, "Do as I have done." And yeah. 
and see, as I say, do as I have done, it's not a matter of me having to say, well, what did you do? Because in the moment and, and with your communication with him, just him saying that opened up a, something in me that understood what he did. It just flows in you. And it's like, oh, yeah, yes. I, I get it. It's it's, like a, I get it, too. It's heavy. Um, it's intense. Yes. It's intense. And it's, and it's immediate, um, not knowledge. And, um, and then I said, well, what about hell? How am I going to tell people about the lack of hell? Right? I, asked, I asked him that too, but go ahead. I can't wait to hear what he told you. <laughs> this is awesome. This is like the best interview ever. This is my favorite topic. People that know me, this is my favorite topic. I love this. I love near death experience, but I love the topic of people that have seen Jesus because it is, there's just, look, once you've had that, that's, I'm obsessed with that. That's like, I just want to be in that presence again, that love. I just want to not disappoint him. Exactly. And you will be, you know, it's just, I'm sorry. I didn't take turn my oh, phone off. That's okay. I'm going to do it right now. And I um, haven't even done the proper introduction. We'll just chat and then we'll go back and then I can edit that back in. I'm so sorry. We'll edit it proper how you want to do the beginning a little too, and then we'll just edit that part back in. But let's just keep, is this cool? We could just keep talking. And then well, we'll let do me the formal thing later. About hell. I want to hear what you think about, did you ask him, does hell exist or did you get a download? I said, I had a download and I said to him, how on earth am I going to share this with the people on earth? Because I was raised in, a, um, uh, in that people go to hell. In fact, I was told when I was four years old that I was going to go to hell. That's terrible. And, uh, <laughs> That's a horrible thing. A and I lived, yeah. So he said to me, I'm, I'm a, a mother of, of uh, eight children. One passed when she was three months old. I adopted awesome. another. And, um, and so a total of eight children. And I love them. I mean, I just, I, I just, they're my life. And uh, he said, if you as a good mother wouldn't cast any one of your children, no matter what they did, right. in fiery furnace or into outer darkness, how much greater is God's love than yours? Right. Well, duh. <laughs> it's like, wow, that answers a lot because although I love and am capable of a lot of love, giving love and receiving love, I, no way do I have God's ability to love. And so it just made common sense. I don't care what my children could do or would do. Um, there's no way I could abandon them. No yeah. way. Yeah. Now, there's been times uh, they have done things I haven't been happy about. And I give them what my dad always called a good dose of leave them alone in other words it's like okay you want to do that it's not what the way you're raised it's not what i approve of and i don't say i'm gonna depart from you i just and and let them learn the hard way which is what they end up doing as right. we all do here on this earth right there's if no we way get to... off the beaten path, um, we will. Right. So, oh, you're frozen there for a moment. Oh, you, you're freeze frozen. Right. Oh, wait, you're coming back. Hold on just a minute. There's frozen a little bit. I guess it's trying to catch up with things. I'm telling spirit, please don't have any technical issues with us. <laughs> Angels come around, no technical issues, you know, because it does that sometimes with indie ears. It'll start doing crazy electrical things. So I said, please, angels, just put it in a place that it's very nice. Well, so did you ever ask Jesus, what is the hell that people are talking about? Can you explain what, um, you know, what is that? Be because did you ever ask him? Um, 
Yes, I didn't ask him. That was just knowledge that was poured into me. And it's basically, we create our own hell. We create that by the words that we speak, the actions that we make, ourselves. And, uh, and we create the experiences that we need to go through to become further educated, not, not so much educated, but I guess tested. We all arrived here on earth as um, spirit beings that are pretty darn awesome because only those who felt that they could come here and survive it yeah, are those who came. And oh. each, yeah. Yeah, each word select their each. parents, mm -hmm. their, their life situations, you know, and uh, according to the Hope you broke up. Broke up a little bit. Okay, you're freezing right now. Still a little frozen. Let me mute that. Okay, maybe talk about, I'll start back from here. So when you ask Jesus about what is the hell? What, it, what does that mean? You know, I heard things as a, as a child that it's not a good place. And it's, it's, I mean, I always heard from what I did hear, uh, I didn't hear a lot, but I knew it was a place for bad people, punishment, um, and so forth. So what did he tell, I want to make sure that we kind of, you know, get that in there. So what did Jesus say about the hell thing to you? Well, he said, well, I, the, my question to him was, how on earth am I going to return there and share what I learned here, that there is no hell? And he said, if you as a good mother wouldn't abandon any of your children or cast them into a fiery pit or into outer darkness um for doing for going against your will or doing something you didn't uh, that you would deem a sin how much greater is god's love than your own and oh that my. made perfect because uh when you when you see the greater picture that we're not here to actually um just to sin or to um be hurt or harmed but we're here to grow uh, greater in the attributes of God. In other words, we want to learn the patience, the kindness, the love, yeah. the forgiveness, and everything that he has. But, and we thought we had it when we were in heaven. We're, we probably were saying, I don't know how much more I can learn because I have all of your attributes. And he probably said, well, how about we test those attributes? Oh, no. <laughs> right. And all of us being egotistical, as I'm sure that we were, we probably said, I'll go and be tested. I'll, 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 I will survive this. I will live through right. it. I will. And so down we come and we selected our parents. We selected handicaps. We selected... And the greater the spirit, the greater the handicap. Yeah. And uh, we created even things that uh, would handicap us uh, so that we could have an additional test or trial. And so down we came and now we're moaning and groaning because we don't like our lives. So why is this happening to me? Or why is that happening to me? And as you know, there are fewer mistakes than we could possibly imagine. But they're there for our education and our spiritual growth and development. Well, you figure if we don't die, we're eternal spiritual beings and we're multidimensional uh, beings. It's not like we really die. So <laughs> we're just here to evolve. 
uh, which, uh, you know, it's funny because I asked Jesus the same thing, you know, what is this thing people talk about with hell? And I really didn't expect an answer. So about three months later, I was woken up in a dream and he was just talking up a storm. He's like, yeah, you know, just like two people talking. And uh, I woke up and I'm like, I'm going to write this down so I don't forget it. And he basically said, people go where their mindset is. And he said that if people that are, um, if they're very sick in the mind, and he says, I offer them my love. And he says, but if they still want to play, you know, like really downtown games that go with the people like that, he says, but I keep trying to help them. And um, I have something better to offer them. But he said, they go where their mind is. And he said, that's why it's important to be mindful of what you say, because you manifest with your words and also your actions. So um, what he was saying, if there, he said, there are some that choose to still, you know, just like some people choose to be a ghost for a while. I don't know why, but they go through this little thing, but he said, it's just where their mind is. He said, but um, his love is always there. He never, he never leaves anybody out. No, no, not, not at all. And uh, I was shown that as well, that uh, he's always there. Yep. And anything that blocks us from him is what we put there. So, um, you know, some people say, I just can't get close to him. I don't know why. Well, you could figure that out <laughs> if you want to take some time. And if you really are being honest with yourself, there are things that you put between you and him. And the only thing that is uh, makes the sin, the sin is... If it's blocking you and God, if it's blocking you and God, then you are going against what you should do, which you call a sin. Now, part, you know, Native American, as, as you say, you are also Native. One of my favorite uh, uh, little sayings is, if you're going down the road and you're lost, Stop. Go back. It's as simple as that. So when you are, you feel that you're being blocked from God. Stop. Yeah. What there that you put there, because He doesn't put anything between you. Absolutely. Nothing. Yeah. And nothing. No. The responsibility is on our shoulders. But you know what I think, and it's funny, you're talking about Native Americans. I, it was funny, Spirit told me to do this. I said, why? And I said, I don't know. So I got on this kick where I would make these Native American feathers. And I have like uh, black turbuline and then it's uh, Cherokee tears on the Trail of Tears. And, uh, and then the Nautilus for the, you know, cycle of life, the infinity. And then, of course, red is my color. <laughs> So, but I would make these for, I had a friend, I made one for her tribe. She's a Lumbee, but, um, but I brought this for you. Uh, I said, why am I supposed to kind of bling it up, of course. And, um, and I thought, why am I supposed to bring this to show this to her? So, um, so when, you know, after the interview, you, you've got my email, let me know what your tribe or any symbols. And, you know, it may take a while to find the little things, but I'll make you something special. These things are also, I use them in sacred things. They're, um, you know, they're hate, they're holy and sacred too. You know, I bless them, but just a right. little something I thought I'd mention that I had that I have, uh, but yeah, I absolutely agree. I think that uh, you must, that must be a question you hear a lot. Like, how can I get close? You know, it's to me, it's more simple than that is if you just quieten your monkey mind, you know, monkey, 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 <laughs> that if you yeah. just quieten it and honor your own soul, you honor your life, you know, your breath, you're just, you're here, you know, by the grace of God, then in that silence, that's, that's where he is. I mean, it's just that easy. God is everywhere. Well, uh, from that beautiful experience, and I was so homesick for heaven, and, and the nearness of Christ, and I just, I was, I battled it. I went into deep depression, and in my prayer, I just said, I really need your help. How am I going to get past this? And he said, for me to go outside and look around for anything that I could see that was natural and beautiful. <sighs> so I did yeah. nature. 
and I, uh, I, w I went out in my backyard at first because I, I actually became agoraphobic, uh, agoraphobic okay. uh, and had anxiety attacks that were terrible. And uh, it was just- That was afterwards? Uh, afterwards, yes. Yeah. And I just wanted to be gone from this earth. I just wanted to be back. And uh, so I went out and I'd start looking at flowers and not just walking by and saying, oh, these are nice flowers. I would I, now, after having entered that rose when I was in heaven, where I pr actually participated in its growth, uh, now I look at flowers in a different way. And so when I would get a flower, uh, go up to a flower, I didn't want to pluck it because it's hard, hard now for me to have cut flowers. But I, I still do. But it took me a, a few years to be able right. to cut. But I go out and I look at each petal and love it. And and I would go from not just the flowers, but I mean, even the limbs or stems and everything that is green and growing, I, I would love. I also uh, learned a lot about wood and how wood is... It is not solid. It is uh, made up. Of, it has spirit, and I would touch it. And um, so I started getting back, sort of, into my native ways, which I never was allowed to do as a kid. And, really? Um, Why is that? Uh, they just well, they you know, yeah. It was back in the day when they were taking the native children from their homes and putting them into boarding schools. They okay. wanted them to learn. Um, about God in the boarding schools. In order mm -hmm. to learn about God, you had to get rid of your heathen ways. Oh and, and you so were really that, born yeah. in popular times. You ever notice that? I mean, you must really like being a renegade because you have really battled society for some time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I bought, people often said, well, why do you think God chose you to come and do this book? I says, because I could. And I would. And you agreed. You agreed. And, yeah. Well, if I didn't think I could, I wouldn't have agreed. But because I, Jesus explained to me that I needed the toughness and the roughness that I went through as a child. I needed to separate myself this from, I was yeah. separated from my parents. I didn't have mother love. I didn't have my father's there. I didn't have... Uh, couldn't associate with my siblings. I was on my own pretty much. And um, so I acquired that self-efficiency, that, that thing that inside of you that just right, becomes your strength. More, your strength. Mm -hmm. That fire. And the fire and having been in, uh, ridiculed for the greater part of my youth, no one can hurt my feelings anymore. It's just not there because they can say what they want to. They don't know me. And if they knew me, I think they would probably like me. So I don't care what they say. Um, and so coming back with, coming back with, with the experience to share, I knew I had to share it. And I also knew that I really wouldn't be hurt or offended by what anyone says. And well, I you, mean that. Right. You know I, that because you know your truth. You know what's true. Right. That's right. Yeah. You know, it's funny as you're talking, I'm sitting here sort of blown away. Going, this is just, I'm like, bam, this is crazy. But uh, you, so many things you're saying are either things he's told me or things that I identify with. Like he told me, um, to the same thing, independence, you know, my mom was young, she wasn't there around a lot, didn't have a dad, my grandparents. I had to learn how to really communicate with God and him and just rely on spirit. Uh, but then when you mentioned the flowers, he has come to me multiple times and given metaphors with flowers and seedings. And he looks at, he told me once, it was so beautiful. He said, um, um, Christ told me, he said, imagine how boring it would be if you had a bouquet full of daisies. And he said, but, you know, just white daisy he said, but if we had African violets and, and roses and pink Gerber daisies and wildflowers and all these different things, 
how amazing would that be? And that's how I see all my children. And he just, he's always talking about flowers. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I think cause you'd understand that I had the, I, I had actually got the analogy of flowers as well as fruit. If you have a fruit bowl, it looks so much more delicious when you have the bananas and the apples, the oranges and the grapes and anything else you can think of. Right. It's a treat. Yeah. And, and if they all taste alike, it, that would not be good either. Mm -mm. And so individual, uh, and again, going to the races, the different colors and, and the different um, uh, lifestyles, uh, they add to the beauty of the world. And so yes. I, I love it. And accepting, you can accept all things that way. And I think it's, it's amazing. And, and it's, it's just so perfect. And if everyone could see that, now why is it that a lot of people don't see it? Well, they weren't meant to see it. Hmm. You know, people say, well, I just don't that outlook. I, I wish that I did. Uh, it's something that person must learn. And you learn through trial and error and experience. Opposite, and so, maybe, yeah. right. And so maybe because of their, if it's racial thing, maybe that person, because of their race and because they need to learn that, all of a sudden, you're going to start feeling all this racial, uh, what, non-acceptance and this, that, and the other until you have to eke your way out and find out what others think, why they think it, and why they're doing it, and start loving in the right way yourself. Because every experience is a very individual trial. Every experience. You know, that's what's fascinating to me, how uh, very detailed, very personal each of our journeys is, but then how it also, so many of its dovetails in the most magical ways. And, and to know that so much of, of it's set and that we have, you know, guides, angels, you know, helpers on the other side, helping us here that we're not alone. And it makes me sad when I, you know, come across people and they, they, they just seem so lost. And I don't, I, I just, it makes me very sad because it's very intentional that they're here. It's very intentional. Right. You know, they're, they're picked to be here. So, um, and people aren't looking for big answers and things, but it's always, you know, it's the simple things. Um, Jesus told me two months ago something, and it's really simple, but if you think about it, meditate on it, it's kind of deep, but it's really pretty. And he said this, and I'm still thinking about it. I can't stop thinking about it. It's be the love you were created to be. Isn't that yeah. beautiful? It what is. does that really mean? I mean, think about it. What is that? I mean, it's kind of limitless. So um, I think it's just simple. It's about the love. It is all about, everything is about love. And when you look at love, it, you know, love is, is there, there are so many things that are in pure love, not just there's a, there's a love of, of uh, we call it love for money, love for this, love for that, love the other. Um, those are, are what you might, uh, I mean, they, are, they really take you away from the, the balanced love, the pure love that God has. And that's what each one of us are seeking. And the only way we're going to find that is to experience all the things that are not love until we finally yeah. recognize what pure love, honest love is. And, um, so uh, people who are looking for it's love, four o'clock. We are all looking for love. Uh, we're going to go through a lot of hurt to get beyond that. To get beyond that, even those people who are so loving and kind and wonderful and beautiful, you look into their life, and they grew to that point. Yeah, look they, at the saints. They had really bad lives, <laughs> really horrible, right? And then they had love at the end. I remember Mother Teresa, you know, how she spoke of how if people knew what went on in her mind, they wouldn't think that she was so saintly. And, uh, <laughs> That's funny. I can relate to that because we're, we're human. Yeah. And uh, we're human. And uh, so 
And we're always going to have the, what I call the adversary or the opposing part of love uh, trying to turn your head and turn you into another direction. And uh, otherwise known as Satan, the devil, blah, 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 uh, whom God also created. So it's not like there's God versus Satan. Uh, <laughs> there was God, right. Satan, you know. And, uh, and why his creation? To give us that opposing energy so that we could Pointers. strengthen our choices. Yeah. So we could strengthen our spirit. You and know, so Benny. We, go ahead. I was just going to say, so bring it on so you can learn, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. That's true. Bring it on. That's a good way of looking at it. So, um, so you know, life to, goal. So, um, you know, Betty, I, I wonder sometimes because, and I want to, you know, I want you to speak about when you're in that presence and I, because I, I want people to get the feel of the immense about, there's really no words, but just, you know, try your best, the immense amount of love that you felt on the other side, what the vibration kind of was about that feeling of that, um, that Christ emanated. And then um, to me, you know, I'm thinking you're right. It is we have, we have obstacles in life. We have things opposing us. You know, how can we love this person when they're really mean? Uh, how can this be? But then, you know, I'm thinking um, to find our, our way back to a pure love, a pureness like Christ. I, that to me, it's not pure, innocent like a child, but pure. It's, it's to me, I feel personally, it's like the greatest love story ever. Because if that were true, then that means that every single life, we're still trying to find the love. So it is like an amazing love story. Well, it's, uh, uh, you know, the love that we experience with Christ is unadulterated love. There's no change in that love. It's no judgment. ongoing. It's for no judgment. It is yeah. nothing. Unconditional. There. Very unconditional love. And we don't have that here on earth. We will never have that here on earth. Unfortunately. Um, we are uh, mortal beings seeking to enhance our spiritual growth. And it's all for the growth. All to expand. It's like being away from way to college. And we are here to learn how to love like God loves. Yes. And that is a hard thing to learn. But, and again, like I said, in order to learn how he loves, we have to go through all the experiences that will teach us what love isn't and what love is. And so that we, mm -hmm. can, we can say yes. And then whatever we learn from that, we actually internalize it. And it becomes a part of our essence. Each one of us are right here on this earth. We are uh, physical and we're spiritual. So we are uh, uh, both chemical and um, I, I guess it's uh, like um, um, formless mass <laughs> energy. It's energy. It's like electricity. <laughs> and we are this <clears throat> combination of, of both, which kind of keeps us grounded uh, while we're trying to build that energy. And, you know, it, people often ask me why their loved ones will die once they step out of the hospital bedroom or yeah. away from home. Right. And our energy keeps them going. And they draw from that energy. Some will let go of it, but more, more often than not, it is there for them to draw from. And the minute you step out for a quick cup of coffee, mm -hmm. the minute you step out for dinner or lunch or whatever, you come back and they have passed. Yeah. Well, they come and. Yeah, very, very, very common. And it hurts the people who are the, the loved ones. But you release that energy. And so I learned a lot about our energy. You were talking about near-death experiences, 
how uh, you affect uh, electricity and uh, all uh, other yeah. types of energy. Uh, I have a difficult time wearing watches. I yeah, I can't either. <laughs> My uh, for Christmas uh, got me this watch that I'm wearing now. Oh, that's pretty. And it, yeah, it is. It's, it's, uh, they they gave that to me years ago, back in '93. Um, and it, I, I finally took it in and had. Uh, I wanted to find out what was different about this watch, whereas other watches, I just would it stop after just a few days and uh, or the batteries would go out or whatever if they're white you know whatever watch right. and they said it because of the backing on the watch it doesn't allow my electricity to affect it oh really well you know what it's funny i spirit told me to put felt put a barrier between it and um, yeah. and, um that's another thing too but yeah we're affecting the watches. It, I, I tell you a funny story. My mom, I have clocks and all through my house, and I used to have a bucket full of all these watches, that fashion watches I go through, and I couldn't understand why I'd run through the batteries. And my mom would swear I was buying cheap batteries, but uh, it took me a long time to realize it was me. I know lights cutting on and off. No, we don't have a poltergeist. It's me. So, <laughs> which can, you can also be. They could be handy if you need to start your car. You can put your intention and say start the car you know so <laughs> people don't understand this about the um after effects and you know i know that you've you know you have an amazing story and and you have um been a spiritual leader for years um the near-death experience and spiritual you know experiences and so forth but out of all the years of you talking to near-death experiencers what do you think the more common side effects are well, that what we're talking about is a very common uh, side effect. Uh, you know, when I'm on, when I was on tour, I learned that um, as I became agitated or whatever, my emotions uh, would be high or low, whatever. Uh, I would, if they're low, I'm draining the energy from elect, uh, from electrical sources. I'm taking it into me. If I'm excited and and just um, uh, and that could be uh, upset. It could be anything that really excites. And I learned this when I was at an airport and walked into the ladies' bathroom. Okay. And all, and you know, where you put your hands under to wash, and they catch your. Yeah, they all turned on. Yeah. <laughs> they all start to turn on. Not only did they turn on, but the toilet started flushing. And as I walked oh by them. And uh, it, it, I thought, what the heck is that? I thought it was a faulty thing. Oh but my then, gosh, um, I get it. Yeah, that's because we're human. So first thing you think yeah. is they need to fix their sinks. But it's you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's funny. These things are so common. It's become a joke to... Uh, uh, to people. And it's funny. I notice when you get several near death experiences together, I can usually tell, um, like if someone doesn't tell me they're a near death experiencer, I can, especially if I'm in front of them, but I don't have to be, but if I'm in front of them, I always know because they're, they, their energy is different. D what do you feel about right. that? Can't you tell there's well, something I off about them? They're a little different. Uh, you could usually tell, yes, and uh, so I, I try not to, to judge. I've run across yeah, some absolutely. that I've had their near-death experiences, they so claim, but uh, because they don't have that. Exactly. They, I wasn't going to mention that, but since you brought it up, we won't mention names, but there are some that don't carry, and some are known. Not, I mean, I wouldn't say a lot of people do that, but I don't feel the energy when I'm around them. I was with one in an elevator at a conference, and I'm like, but I, I get high when I'm around others that are like me. I get woohoo! It's like yeah, because we just bring that light. There's no greater party. Let me tell no. you. No, no, because everybody's bringing their own little God portal. Everybody gets high. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so, so that's interesting. It is, and and you know, 
know, not just near-death experiencers feel this, but when I went on tour and I was with my publishers and we'd stop and go into a restaurant, um, we'd walk in and, and, and they just said, Betty, you affect everyone because the, the hostess would be there and would go up and say, well, we're going to have to wait. We're, you know, we were overbooked or what, and this, that, and the other. And she'll look at me and she'll say, you know, I think we have a place. And uh, they usually have a man, what they call a manager's table. And so, and it's always a real nice table where the manager, when they take a break or whatever. And I always knew that we were getting the manager's table and she would take us in and set aside and says, how does this keep happening to you? I said, I don't know. And then when we came out, this one uh, hostess, she said, what is there about you? <laughs> oh, I'm sure they do that with you. Oh, yeah. I don't want you to leave. She says, it's like I've known you. And I don't think I had more than a couple of words with her. But I, they feel, as I told my publishers, what they feel is God's love. Absolutely. They, the, the part of that that we bring back. You bring it back. Mm -hmm. And if it's still, if you, if you have nurtured it, if you, at which, if you've had the experience, you can't help but nurture it, right? Oh, yeah. That is an app. And, uh, if, and so it's always there. And other people feel that they want it. Or if you give them a hug, oh, my God. Yeah, they want more hugs. Yeah, they can feel the, the love, feel the electricity. They feel it. It's all in your, um, in your energy that surrounds you. They, they want to be near you. They want to feel it. And I don't know how, how, how it is with you. You're a beautiful woman. Uh, and, and, and if there are men around, they gravitate to that. Not just to your outward beauty, but because of the love the, and acceptance that they feel when they're in your presence. I've had more people saying, I don't know what there is about you, Betty, but I feel accepted. I feel that, mm -hmm. you know, there's no judgment. I just feel well, they would be right. their love. They would be right. Because you know it's tough yeah. on everybody here. <laughs> right? It is. It's hard yeah. here. It's not easy here. A conduit of love. And uh, everyone is attracted to a conduit of love. Now, I don't know about your husband. I know it was really difficult for mine at first because he just thought that that was an unusual attraction that people would want you around the men, women too, but mainly, you know, men. You know, it's funny because, um, you know, I've had several and, you know, being a child, you know, I was I'm always different, but... I've always had this magnetic personality because I just love people. And so it's women too. I mean, they'll like yeah. bake me things, make me little things. And I appreciate it. It's really sweet. And it's men sometimes, you know, in the past, you know, men get confused like, wow, what is this? So they think it's something else when it's just really, because they don't, you know, they get confused. But uh, I don't, you know, I politely don't embarrass them, but, you know, get it straight that I, that it's, um, you know, yeah. it's not, it's not, it's not it. And, and I don't get mad and I don't judge. Um, uh, but he's, he said, Oh, you're, he said, you're my little uh, celebrity. I always say I'm a celebrity for Jesus. <laughs> and he laughs, no. but yeah. But no, I think a lot of people a, are like that. I do. I think a lot of Indians are like that. They're just magnetic. They just can't help it. If you notice, I mean, I could name a, a roll off a ton of names that are, that are like that. And I think that we're just little light bulbs. Yes, exactly. And that is, that was a point I was going to make. And that is that when you live in a loveless world and then you are brought in contact with a person who does love and loves more, I'm not, going to say that I love like God does, which is totally unconditional, because I don't. There's no way that I, anyone here on It's hard. I, I don't. I talk to Jesus. I just can't do that. I try to understand, but I just, you know, I can't love that person that has 
you know, a serial killer that's killed all those people. I don't understand that. I don't have that under, I tell them, I don't have that understanding. I'm sorry. Don't have the understanding, nor will you ever have it while you're on earth is what I was told. And because you don't see through the vision of God mm -hmm. and the only person who has that vision is him. And what he sees is the uh, forward and backwards of each individual. He knew you before you came to earth. Isn't that good news? That's he such knew. good news. He knew us all by name. Isn't that wonderful? I just love that. He knew us before we came to earth. He knew what you're capable of. He allowed you to uh, experiment here on earth uh, in all the things that you believed would make you or uh, create the growth in your spirit. Um, it wasn't just because you wanted to do these things. It was because he saw that it was valuable to you. And so he permitted that. He allowed it. Yeah. People and don't like to hear that, but you're right. He does allow it for our growth. He allowed it. And uh, so, I mean, you have him to thank and yourself to thank for every situation that you face here on this earth. Every right. Right. situation. You know, it's funny, I'm, all things. even the bad stuff, when I look back on things, I'm like, wow, I really learned a lot from that, <laughs> right? Exactly. Let's do that again. Wow. You know? Again, and, uh, and or if you do do it again, you're going to improve upon it and make it better. So, or you're going to be able to help someone else through their trial. You can say, wow, I did that, and this is what I did to make it better. And so mm -hmm. you, you can do that. And uh, uh, you, you know. Now, I was going to ask you, I'm curious. Um, you, you know, I love how you've merged um, your, your uh, Native American, you know, ways and nature into forests with God, because God is everywhere. And I do want to make a comment. Jesus said that. I said, you know, I really miss you. And I did. I, every now and then I'll feel a little sad, you know, because I'd miss him, you know. But um, he said, I'm everywhere. Go sit outside. Look at that tree. Go feel that tree. Go look at that leaf. Go look at that blade of grass. I'm everywhere. He said, you can't avoid me being everywhere. And I was like, okay. But um, I think it's interesting how you merge that. Uh, and uh, and really embrace that part of your yourself that you weren't allowed to. And it's it's funny because I'm you know also was not allowed to talk about. I guess because at one point Native Americans were treated pretty much like dirt, so it wasn't like a high status. <laughs> I know some people talk about you know, but it is true. And so uh, it's uh, it is what it is to me. Uh, you know, it's like the good, bad, and the ugly, you know, Clint Eastwood, is that we have to accept, you know, if we just allow all that with us, because all of it is our sum total of how we learn and who we are. Well, exactly. And uh, so every experience is good. Every experience. Uh, even the things that you're ashamed of or disappointed uh, in, uh, they all serve you well. In fact, if anything comes to you that, uh, and this is sort of a native way, when there is a trial or a tribulation or whatever, you're to welcome it. And you can even do it verbally if you're alone. You can say, welcome, my friend. What do you have? What gift do you have for me? Because it is serving you in some way. Everything serves you in some way. And, you know, like... Uh, I became a clinical hypnotherapist because I was taught on, from on the other side about healing and how we can eat, heal. But if the spirit doesn't allow healing, you can't heal. And you Absolutely. Heal. You're, you're right. It's a surrender of the spirit before the mind or the body. Absolutely. It's exactly. a willingness. I, yeah, you must. And, so, um, and I, so I became a therapist for several years and I worked with people, but um, it, it, it's amazing on how uh, some things serve that you wouldn't want an illness in you, but it's there to serve you in some way. 
you allowed it in you and um, uh, for a reason and again uh, to serve. And yes. so you have to let go or identify it and discuss it. Now, a lot of, a lot of therapists will say, you've got to get rid of that. No, there's no part of my body that I haven't accepted in me. Accepted to serve me and to help me in some way. But if it's, a, if it's something I, 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 I want uh, to get better or work out, um, address it. And you say mm -hmm. to that, you have to acknowledge it first. A lot of people won't acknowledge it. But yeah, without, I understand. Yeah. Without recognition, without acknowledgement, you're pretty blind to what's going on. So you have to acknowledge it and you have to say to it, and I like to do everything verbally because our words come out in vibration and yes. force. Sound vibration is power. Oh, absolutely. And so I'll get alone uh, to where I don't offend or, or create, uh, you know, suspicion or whatever. And I'll say to it, welcome, my friend. Welcome. What gift are you giving me today? And then wait in meditation. If nothing comes, then if you, if, if you want that gone, then you give it another job. Because that part of you is precious, precious. You know, like a lot of the movement of getting rid of the child or growing up the child with the end. And getting, yes. yeah, that was bad news. That is not good. You don't get rid of anything that is in you. It's that certain. child's still there somewhere. It's still there. It didn't go anywhere. <laughs> it's not going. It's yeah. not going. But you can give it another job because it wants to serve. It wants to serve you. And so you and and so ask it what it can do instead. So say, so you know what? You are a very powerful part of me very powerful part and you control this part of me that I would like to improve and do better and so what can you do to serve me what can you do to help me and you know what that child within you know how children are you can talk them into anything if you do it with sweetness and with some depth of understanding that they can uh, un that they can understand, you know, some level of understanding that they can understand. Like the child within obviously hasn't really grown up much. And we all have that. You know? All of us. How can we not? But to me, I feel like that, um, you know, what did Jesus say? Be like a little child. I think so many adults take themselves so seriously that they, um, that they wanted to be better and they wanted it, you know, what is the goal of a child to be grown up? And now they're all grown up. You know, the goal is, okay, you're grown up. You did it. Well done. <laughs> you know, you, you have a, you have a family, a life. That's great. But they, but that childhood innocence and wonder is magical. And when we connect with that uh, innocence and that wonder, and that vulnerability, see a lot of people, the very opposite is like, don't be vulnerable, right? That's the very opposite. You can't trust people, right? That's what people say. But that's the very thing that we need to do, I think, is being a little vulnerable because how can we ask people to be honest with us if we're not a little bit vulnerable? So um, I, I know the way I've always thought of it is the way out is the way through. There's no easy shortcut to anything. Um, that's why you really kind of, I, I think be, you know, you kind of, I don't know, I guess I, I guess I kind of view myself as a spiritual warrior. I just go, okay, let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Come on. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then, and then, because you, then the other as aspect of that is you figure God's got a plan. It's all in your best interest. So, um, but so many people, you're right, don't think like that. And I do remember that movement. I remember all of the books that came out in the self-help section about how to get rid of things and how to so-and-so, you know, I do think it's uh, good to change your language. If you have negative language, I think that's a positive thing, you know, rewording, like how you 
present yourself in the words you say, but I'm with you that all of the sum total of who we are, good and bad, it's all a part of this experience. And to den deny that is deny a part of our soul's experience here. Well, we are co-creators with God, uh, although we're here on earth. And so we, as we um, parade, it's, uh, uh, our language is a part of that creation. And so when you use negative words or even swear words, even though they say, well, it's not really a swear word. I'm not really using God's name in vain. But how it is uh, normally uh, taken, like the F word, um, we know that, that it's, it's more than the word itself. Have you noticed a vibration that comes from those yeah, words? It's an intention. Yeah. Right. right. It, 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 uh, it's like chopping something up. Uh, you're destroying something right then and there. And so we create, and Jesus taught me about the flow of things, uh, that, um, and then I learned them again in the native way because they always say to, uh, you know, they, they would walk with the, the moccasins on. And um, some of the Europeans marveled at how they could walk over on a dusty road and never stir up dust. Hmm. Okay. In gentle, gentle steps, although they were meaningful and they could travel quite quickly, they did it in a way that they were not disrupting, disturbing Mother Earth. See? And yes. the same thing nowadays when you break the air, uh, you walk in the room briskly. Right away, people look up and wonder, okay, where are they going? What's going on? What is the attitude behind it? It disturbs the air. It disturbs the vibration. It disturbs the electrical energy, the static electricity. It disturbs all of that. And so Jesus was, uh, did teach me about that. And the same thing is true with sound. When mm -hmm. people speak out voices, there's a certain sound in their voice that is disturbing. And how those mm -hmm. sounds can into some people and actually cause an illness. That's, and, that's very powerful what you're saying. And very few people talk about that. But is, if someone has words and even if the words are something simple like thank you you know thank you it's like thank you okay that's genuine thank you but if someone goes thank you that's not really thank you that's it's right. an intention that goes in as someone is you know especially if they're around someone negative that has the words and their intentions are harsh it can make someone sick yes. you never hear anyone really talk can. about this it's very important to our own development to make sure that we um you know that we try to be mentally spiritually healthy and part of that's not being around people that um create damage with their words right that is the only right. way i know to put it damage right. it's damage it's damage it's damage and it disrupts the energy uh when you when you even even hand gestures you know, when, you, when a oh, person yeah. is talking, mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. uh, say, you're dividing space and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I thought back, why was he teaching me that? Well, because again, mm -hmm. I went into, and and uh, when I've done, uh, do seminars, I teach the, the, the natural flow to be graceful in all things. And it really ties in with the native ways uh, that I loved. And I didn't know the native ways. I, 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 I actually, while I was in heaven, was instructed. And uh, it's something I haven't talked too much about. Uh, but uh, it, it, I was instructed uh, in the, because there's tradition and uh, traditional ways that, the native people and others seem to practice the native ways, uh, but they're new traditions. They are not the ancient ways. They are not mm. the ways old. Uh, they are the ways that were changed and uh, misinterpreted and changed again. And now, uh, you know, decades down the road here, we have a new tradition. So people say, yes. well, actually, traditional. 
No, it's not traditional. You're going to have to go back to really find the pureness in all of their practices. And so that's where I went I, uh, and where I was taught. And so I go back. I was taught to go back and then bring those forward. How many and, generations um, did Jesus tell you to go back where it was not tainted? You know, I don't think it was uh, told in generation as, as it was just taking me to the substance okay. of and 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 to to spread that and to bring that forward and um and i have i i have done that because i've i've gone to um many of the native tribes in uh in the u.s and canada and um and teach them that there is there well for instance you might have heard about this and that is when you go into a sweat lodge and how some people were actually died from. Uh, yeah, I have heard that. Right. Which gave it a bad name, which is actually and a really so good thing. These are <laughs> awesome thing. It's misunderstood. And those practicing it took what I think was probably a traditional thing and put their um, uh, energy on it. You always want people to come out of out of a sweat lodge going, oh my gosh, I've never been to one like this before. Uh, well, in that case, uh, not at all. Well, what I was taught uh, while still in heaven is that the sweat lodge is like entering the, the belly of, a, of, of Mother Earth. And you're a newborn inside that belly and all who enter into um, the the into the lodge are are like emory embryos and you go in uh to listen and to pray and to sing and to become part of mother earth and of course the father in heaven anytime you bring in the grandfathers that's what they call the stones you bring them in and you bring them in too hot and too many okay. and if one person one person has to leave because it's too hot for them. You have just aborted. Okay, it's got to be. Person. It's got to be unified. It has to be together. Um, right, together. And I have been to different uh, uh, sweats, and people laughed when someone had to get out. Oh, you can't take it, huh? Too hot for you, bah, you know. Well, all right, well, we're going to continue on bringing another grandfather, you know. And so it becomes an ego thing. Has nothing to do with the experience uh, okay. of being with people. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's sacred. So this is the, and that's how it's altered, the sacredness of it. Yeah, I understand. I, I have not done a sweat lodge. I did do a purification for a month, and I was in a in a sweat sauna and did vegetables and vitamins and I ran all sorts of stuff out and I was, my IQ went way up afterwards, I guess, because we're surrounded by toxins. <laughs> you know, we do have these yeah. bodies. So that, yeah. and, and we're like a little sponge. Well, I know that we've, we uh, have gone on a little bit, um, but before we like, you know, end off, I wanted to, a couple things, um, a couple questions. When you were in um, heaven and you were with Christ walking, um, and you know, it's different for different people, did he tell you certain things or was it a complete quick download? It was both. Okay. It was both. Um, okay. And, but more than a download too, it was a remembrance. Uh, the longer I was there, the more like, I was right. awake what I already knew. Right. You're like, oh, okay. I remember now. Yes. Uh, yeah, I do. Mine was both, but what's really unusual is I still keep getting downloads. Um, but it felt certain things were certain lessons for me and questions I answered when I asked them, but it was kind of like, I didn't care. Like for example, um, 
like I said, well, how does, you know, electricity work? And I knew instantly, and I'm like, eh, I was kind of bored about that. Um, but it was more the things that I needed to hear about love, you know, coming back to love my mom. And I'm like, why? Well, she'll be fine. Uh, but <laughs> I'd rather be with you. No, she knows that we laugh about it. But uh, but it was, um, you know, it's funny because I look at people and I'm not saying it's not important to have accomplishments or to be studied or educated or to learn. But you have, you kind of know everything. I, I think maybe you could speak about that when you cross over. But the only thing that matters is, is our relationships. What is it? Be love, give love, receive love. So it's kind of, it's not that, that that's not important, but I think that People in uh, people on Earth would think, "Well, wouldn't it be great to know all this stuff?" You know, especially very scholarly people to know everything. But I found that it, it didn't mean that much. Um, explain how what you think wisdom and how wisdom is given on the other side. Maybe explain that to people. Well, one thing I I, I found very interesting is that um, you know I hadn't. Uh, Traveled a lot before my near-death experience. I I never saw some of the beauty of of the states, let alone yeah. overseas. But coming back, I didn't really care if I ever saw them. <laughs> I, well, I mean, you just hit the jackpot. You just were in heaven with Jesus. So, I mean, like, I mean, I don't know what can really top that. I don't know if Paris can top that. <laughs> I just. <laughs> Because here, what we think matters doesn't matter when you are in heaven. Uh, it, it, it just, it really, truly doesn't. And it's like I tell uh, many people who are uh, in grief, and they say, well, what are they doing up there? Do they care about me? Do they want? You know, when I was there, I didn't care about my family. And I had all my little children that I love with all my heart. I knew that they had a mission and a purpose here that they needed to fulfill right. and that it wouldn't be very long and they would be back home again. Right. It doesn't take long and, over there. It's like a blink of an eye. Right. Does it? Yeah. So you don't have that grief or that missing or yearning or longing. And uh, now I know that there are expanded things that we do there when we're in heaven. I, I was on a mission to become educated and knowledgeable about certain things so that I could bring them back and share them in Embrace by the Light. Of course. So it was a purpose. And yeah, um, definitely. So that was my, in, that was my focus. And that was my intent. Um, uh, in, in Once I made it, I guess, my intent, because... I didn't want to come back like you did it. You know, you just, no, I just, I, I hate just to tell I, people that because then they're like, Oh, if it's that good, I don't want to go drink cool, the, the strange Kool-Aid, but it's just, yeah. it's just no comparison. I just really said, please don't let me go back to that place. But right. you know, we went over a few things. <laughs> he said he needed me. He said, I wouldn't be the only one and I'm not. So <laughs> he said, there'd be other people, you know, um, in their own way, sharing this message. So, um, you know, he, he's got it all set up, but yeah, it's, um, you know, it, it's, 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 um, it's perfect there. It's hard to explain that the concept, not wanting anything. Yeah. You don't want anything. You certainly don't want to live, leave there. And, uh, is, you know, does Jesus exist? Absolutely. He exists. Does he live? Absolutely. He exists. He lives, and um, will we yeah. see him again? Absolutely, I, I I count on it, you know, and and uh, and I'm not ashamed uh, uh, to to say that, you know, I really not, and uh, you know, yeah, I am in the process of of doing the movie. In fact, I'm writing this script with is a co-writer. That, oh, is that what you're doing? Is it the movie to? Embrace the, by the light. Right. It's going oh to my be. gosh! I'm so excited. And um, it is very exciting. Uh, but we have hit all kinds of crossroads, and um, uh, and and a lot of that includes 
a Christ or because of Christ. Oh, uh, boy. Many, oh, I know. Hollywood, are you kidding me? I mean, <laughs> you don't some, even, you, you, you're not supposed to say the name. Right. You're not supposed to say the name. But the exciting part is, is I'm actually um, pulling in people that have enough clout to make this happen. And, uh, but over the, because Embrace by Light is now, well, it came out in 92. This is uh, 2000, we're almost in 2021. Yeah. Uh, it's been, uh, what, 40 some years um, uh, since, uh, uh, or 30, I don't know. Anyway, it, uh, uh, all these years that Embrace by Light has been out, I've had, of course, uh, talked with people about producing the movie but here's the kind of funny thing is they said well you know we can't really have jesus right this is embrace they'll have the whole thing but they won't mention him yeah. i all right i, I know really. it, it, yeah. that's kind of the point of it all and <laughs> it's like it's kind of the punchline you're taking out <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah it's still bad like so, that it's crazy yeah i know we're still hitting that kind of it's kind of a you know and i'm not going to write him out of this and so i said i you know i'll do this but i am going to be a co-writer with whoever the professional writer is that's a great uh, idea to... because yeah and and maintain the um creative control mm -hmm. the integrity or, of it all or i'll never i'll never i don't care if the book ever is done if it can't be done right. I so. totally agree with that because you came back. That was important. If it's going to be finished, it's got to be finished a certain way. And how can you compromise on Jesus? Come on. <laughs> really? So, I mean, I can under, I can understand getting the tall salad versus, you know, the steak, but I mean, you can't compromise on Jesus. So, uh, yeah, you know, that name is still apparently very powerful <laughs> and controversial. So, um, yeah, when I started doing the Christ channelings, which I told him no twice <laughs> in March, I'm like, he asked me to do it. And he doesn't usually ask me directly. He'll hint around, but I said no twice. He goes, why? I said, because people will probably attack me and I don't feel comfortable, but I finally did. And, um, it did, that was the most controversial thing I've done. And it was the most beautiful, sweet, it's everything you'd think it'd be. I mean, it's exactly what you would think. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, I even got kicked off Facebook because of that 5,500 people because of, as soon as I put that out there, it doesn't make any sense to me. This is all about the love. And I don't tell, you know, I know people, all different religions, all different backgrounds. And, uh, you know, uh, that has no effect on, them or me so but yeah apparently it's still controversial to bring up that name i know oh well <laughs> oh well i mean what it's do you good. do yeah exactly yeah, what, what are you do you gonna do? do do you lie about it i mean uh yeah, yeah. so I, I totally understand now tell us so you're taught us so the other thing i want to ask is the current things you're working on so the movie you're still working through that tightly maintaining the rain so it goes through exactly the way that you want. Do you have any kind of idea when that might be out another year from now, or do you have a clue on that? Well, we have to get the script uh, finished, okay. and then as soon as and then um, hopefully one of the studios will pick it up, and then from then on it goes on to their schedule. So I haven't a clue when it will be out, because especially with the COVID. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, all the six feet distancing and actors and whatnot. I don't yeah. know how. Yeah, so it might be a while. But what I, my goal, personal goal is, is to get the script finished. And that way it will be right here. And so that way, if, if something happened to me, what if I got the COVID or what if I car wreck or whatever, and I'm taken back I home? It'll be right. it'll be here, and um, this is what it's going to be, or it's not going to be ever, because I, I never it. want 
the book to be, you know, so I'm going to get that done. I'm getting it done in chunks. I hear you. God has a review his wisdom and when it's going to be done. Uh, I don't need to know what he knows. He'll give it to me as he in chunks mm -hmm. or whatever he wants to. I just need to walk daily uh, down the path he sends me and whatever doors he opens, I go through them. Yeah. That's it. You, you can't really say no. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just the way of it. I mean, it's, it's it's the better way of it. <laughs> it uh, you know, I, whatever God sends me, I I go. And, uh, you know, uh, here about a year and a half ago, I was contacted by Kim Kardashian. And she wanted okay. me to come on. And uh, I just, I couldn't believe the anger that people mainly christians yeah uh, really they, uh, why oh yeah no wait i'm confused oh. I, knew, I knew something about the the kim cards but I, don't, I didn't know i thought she read your book and was impressed by it but i really didn't know much more but what what happened what and why were christians mad i don't know uh well they didn't approve of kim and uh, and her oh, show and I got it because she's a little bit sexy and all that, or whatever right. model, you know. Okay, okay. So she didn't look like um, Betty Crocker. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm getting it. Takes a while. I got it. Okay. She's a little too saucy for the Jesus message, but uh, isn't her right. husband? He's like a born again uh, Jesus loving man. I mean. I mean, it sort of makes sense, you know, I guess, you know, right? They're allowed to evolve. I don't know. So, so that's, so that's interesting. Did you end up doing the show or not? I couldn't hear you. Well, absolutely I did because absolutely I did. I did do her show. Well, good for you. Uh, it wasn't aired. It wasn't aired. I went there. We did film it. But it turned out to be um, an awesome, awesome meeting with her and her family. How bad it and, was. Uh, if this, this uh, their producers later said that it wasn't a type of show that they were looking for. Uh, that's, it just that's didn't. a shame. Yeah. Well, I didn't bother. That's Hollywood. Me. Yeah. But I know that it had its effect on Kim. It had its effect on her sisters. Yeah. It was what God wanted. Absolutely. That's what would, I believe that a hundred percent. I mean, you know, I mean, you look back in, you know, stories of the Bible where Jesus went all this way and traveled for one person. Do you not think that he has us do that too? I mean, yeah, it should have just been for her ears and her family to set a motion, you know, to, to bring that love to them. And it was well worth it. It doesn't have to go to millions. It can go to one person. That's right. Well, in Kim's, in Kim's um, going there for Kim and uh, the publicity that she gave me because of her love for Embrace, uh, believe me, because of her, uh, many people's lives were touched that I could oh. not have read, that would not have read my That's book. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, reckon, uh, reprim, um, <laughs> recommended it. And so, uh, so no, that's, that's Kim's ripple. And what coming back to her because of what she did is going to be absolutely beautiful. And then imagine with the film out. So, you know, we, this is where we can't question that we just do as we're told. And uh, yeah, right. it, it is, and, and you don't know just with that one person or few people, the change that can occur in them, and then the next person, and maybe they start questioning and become more soulful. So I think it's beautiful what you did. I mean, I look at everyone. Look, I, I know a lot of people that are very spiritually aware now, that were former, you know, strippers. <laughs> I mean, or whatever they did. You know what I'm saying? And that you can. This is. We are eternal spiritual beings. We can progress. And if people are asking, right. I think it's great. I don't, I don't judge people like that. You know, we all start out somewhere. We all start out somewhere.
from where we all can grow from wherever. Absolutely. There's, there's hope for everybody. And I don't, I don't, I don't judge people like that way. I think that we're endless and we can do anything. So especially when we co-create with God, well, you have been a complete joy. Um, you're so uh, gracious and kind and humble. Wait a minute. I know somebody else who's got those qualities um, <laughs> that uh, way more than, than I expected. I mean, you are, you are, um, really a soulful person. I know you do this from the essence of the bottom of your soul to, um, to live your life like this. This is not just a, a project. So the fact that you, we went back and forth today and then, you know, with this, you know, we're trying different things and we finally got on the zoom. Um, it's so worth it. It's just been so worth it. And I can't wait for people to hear this. Um, messages, you, you know, that you've mentioned and nuggets of wisdom. And just to let you know, your interview is going to uh, be posted on Christmas Day. And that's my thank you to you. And my thank you to Jesus, I must say his name. <laughs> because that way, if you can, you know, what a special time and with the Christmas in the back, you had no idea. Here we show up, you got a beautiful tree and you never you did not know this but yours is airing on Christmas day because I want yours to have an effect on people and warm their hearts and let them know that they're important. They were put here for a reason and that um, they just need to love more. And how do you do that? Surrender and just be glad you're here. Why you're here, you know, cause we're not here that long. So thank you so much for your time, Betty. You're an amazing woman. Uh, I have, uh, I read your book, when it came out a long time ago, I've, you know, followed you, but, um, getting the real deal, the real person, you, there's no, I mean, it's just, I mean, as good as it gets. I mean, you are, uh, I talked to a lot of near death experiencers and, um, I see the, the light in you in the fire. And I love the fact that it's not burnt out. And I love how, um, I call it cantankerous. Like you're like, I'm going to say my message. <laughs> and I love how you're driven like that. Um, and you don't let anyone, um, shut you down. Anyone that's willing to hear that you, you'll tell them. So I hope many will hear this beautiful message of love. So thank you. And as you know, from your experience and from my experience, one day, everyone's going to have the same experience whether they like it or not and so they'll learn from that but um but what you're doing and and what i'm doing is preparing them uh yes, because sir. they're co-creators with god you can create what you're going to meet on the other side um and so if i were them i would definitely educate myself and um, be prepared to accept the beauty of what lies there for them. Because many Absolutely. people will find in their creation, which is, uh, uh, as you've heard from near-death experiences, they'll find themselves in hell, only to know that if they cried out for Jesus, they were rescued Immediately. from that place. Immediately. Yeah. But hell is their creation. Because each one has their own idea of what hell is, so it's kind of, mm -hmm. kind of creative. Well, so anyway, some, I just some... go ahead. I'm sorry. You, you go ahead. Finish up. I was just going to say that, um, uh, you know, if they're going to create anything on the other side, it all starts out with hope. You mm -hmm. know, if you want something, you you're not a believer in Christ. And then you start saying, but I hope that's the way it is. I hope what Tamara and Betty are saying here is true. I hope that this is true. That's the door that opens up. The door is called hope. And so your spirit opens that door of hope, walk through it. This hope that that is what happens. Hope will turn into faith. Faith will come, turn into belief. Belief will turn into acceptance. And that's what we want when we um, return back to God. We want to be able to just walk right through those doors. And the pathway to God is called love. So you can see this yes. great big sign that says love. Right. And just, yeah. yeah that's that, what I want them to do. 
Oh, absolutely. And you can also visualize that. I do want, I know we're, we're done, but I have to answer, I have to get you to answer one question because I know people are going to ask me, what about those near death experiencers that are different religions or different so-and-so and then they, are they going to have a Jesus experience or what about the ones that don't? I know I'm going to get emails on that. So can you take that? <laughs> Well, Jesus actually answered that to me or for me while I was there. And it was something to bring back uh, uh, that he would not, he will be there for the believers or those that are open to him. Uh, those who cannot accept, they want to re reject uh, Christ and only can, only he can judge when they are ready. Him. I've had many people in the Jewish faith who did not be, uh, believe that Christ would meet them upon their death, write me, and even one called me and said, uh, my mother's dying, but she's, she, on her deathbed, she hollered out to Jesus and opened her wow. arms. Wow. Yeah, she, and I, I thought, I says, well, that's a good thing. She says, no, it's not a good thing, Betty, we're Jews. And I says, yeah. oh. Well, well so is Jesus. Story. <laughs> he is too. Uh, it's yeah, so yeah, it's a, but you, he explained to me that you will, uh, you will meet with whom, whomever you or feel whatever comfortable in, uh, but that all men, mankind, will come to know who he is eventually, anyway. But. Um, and I like to tell the little short story about this one near-death experiencer who did not believe in, in Christ. He was an atheist. Um, and when he died, he um, was greeted by this humongous teddy bear, teddy bear that was taller than he was. And he said, and, and the teddy bear reached for him and wrapped himself around him and was giving him this teddy bear hug. And the guy said, so he just wrapped around his arms around the teddy bear and was feeling the fur and the warmth of it. And then he felt this chuckle. And then he heard the chuckle. And then he said, Jesus, because he knew Jesus. We haven't, we just forgot him, right? Yeah. And he said, yeah, he laughs all the time. Mm-hmm like a teddy bear now he's looking like Jesus and because he called out his name Jesus right <laughs> so Jesus said to him I appeared this way for your acceptance and so oh wow that's beautiful yes and he has appeared yes. different ways to different people what they would be willing to accept yeah that's an he said to me but all will come to know who I am. Yes. So, yeah. I accept that. Well, what I, all I know is I can't tell people th this was my experience, like it was your experience. And I can tell you that, <laughs> that um, the download, I, I would, wasn't raised really religious, but I knew who he was. And I'm just going to tell you, he was top dog. Just going to say he was kind of important. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a big deal. Um, so I totally, I totally get that. So, well, look, this should be a wonderful uh, Christmas story for people to hear, to warm their hearts that you came into uh, people's life and, uh, and, and there's more to come, the movie and uh, who knows what else is going to happen with you. And, you know, right now, everybody's, you know, because of the, the, you know, the pandemic still and so forth, we got to get past uh, at least people can connect with you in this way and hear your story. So uh, oh. thank you so much. You're amazing. And I will, uh, you know, make sure that you get, uh, you know, a copy of this one. It is out, but it will be out Christmas Day. Oh, Our gift to everybody. You. Thank you so much, Betty. I, I appreciate you so much. Absolutely. And God bless you. God bless you. You just continue doing what you're doing.